And moving from the rodeo to Mardi Gras. Woohoo! <laughs> Another big event for some of you here in Mississippi. And the Mississippi Aquarium is actually partnering with a great organization to make sure you get all those beads back where they need to go and not into our waterways. And so joining us is Jeff Clark from the uh, Mississippi Aquarium to tell us more. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Rebecca. How you doing? I am doing well. But first, I want to tell folks that you have to stay connected to the muse- uh, to the aquarium if you want to get in on some of the good events because you were supposed to come on to talk about Valentine's, but y'all, y'all sold out, which is a good thing. So what's happening around Valentine's? So on Valentine's night, Valentine's Day, we have... We're having a, a dinner. This is the second year we did it. We did it two days last year. We decided to do it one t- one day this year, just on Valentine's. Last year we did it the 13th and the 14th. But uh, it's, a, it's a dinner for two, and the tables, you buy a table, and you have a choice of entree, uh, appetizers, all these things, and you get to sit. Um, you know, you, you have a choice. You can buy a ticket at our main window, or you can buy one in the tunnel. And uh, it's a really, really cool awesome thing for valentine's day you know you're getting to eat in the aquarium you know if you're lucky enough to get a table in the uh in the tunnel you're actually eating in the tunnel like in the middle of our um ocean's habitat but you know it's so popular that that, that it sold out quickly and uh you know that's well, that's why you just need to stay. To oh, absolutely! No. But that's why you need to stay connected so you can stay up to date on all the things that the aquarium is offering. And while we're at least talking about Valentine's, we have been talking here on good things about the different zoos who are utilizing this as an opportunity to sell tickets to feed things named after folks' exes to animals there on site. And so, you know, I know the otters, they love them, you know, some fishy fish and as well as some of the sharky sharks. I'm just saying in the future, Jeff, y'all might could not have it on Valentine's. (laughs) I've heard about this trend and, uh, you know, it's uh a... it, it, it's certainly interesting. Um, you know, but talking about staying connected to Mississippi Aquarium, one of the best ways to do that is to follow us on Facebook. Go on Facebook, give us a like. Our events come up uh, on there in real time. You can follow, also follow us on Instagram, um, at MS Aquarium. You know, and that way, as soon as we're posting events, even before I get a news release out or I get a the opportunity to come on with good news with Rebecca Turner, you know, you can, can see these events happening in real time time and also too the fact that you guys are feeding into the other part of your yes you're the aquarium people can come out but it's also the educational piece and the sustainability piece which leads into you guys collecting beads you're not going to put them around the penguin's neck although i think that'd be adorable and give them their own little (laughs) first line there at the end of mardi gras but but no this is this this um connects to your other mission as well so how did y'all partner to collect mardi gras beads we decided to do last year um you know our, our we have a commitment to education conservation in our community and uh this beat drive kind of covers you know hits all those notes um we were, we were talking about it last year and there used to be a place in gulfport called gulfport industries and they have adults with disabilities who would repurpose mardi gras beads and then take them and they'd be resold so it was creating jobs it was a really great program but like many things, it was shut down during the pandemic. So I found a place in New Orleans it's called the Ark of Greater New Orleans, um, and they have a huge bead recycling program. So we, we partnered with them. They give us the containers. We fill them up. We have one at our ticketing plaza. We also have one at our security entrance on 22nd Avenue. If you have them in your car and don't want to walk up the hill to the aquarium entrance, just pull up to our security entrance and one of our security People will be more than happy to uh, to help you unload them. So anyway, we, we're going to do this uh, through March 22nd. You can bring them to Mississippi Aquarium every day, 10 to 5. And on March 24th, we're going to have, have an event here, a PR event for our sponsors and community partners. And then we're going to take put them in a rider truck and take them over to New Orleans, to the Ark of Greater New Orleans. And they have the same program where adults with disabilities are going to refurbish them, restring them, and then they'll be sold at their store there. So it hits all the notes. You know, it's it's uh, it's certainly a strong conservation message without being heavy-handed because people love Mardi Gras. You know, I want everyone to have the best Mardi Gras. It's one of my favorite times of the year. But, hey, instead of throwing all that stuff away that you're going to collect, just bring it to us. We'll take it to New Orleans, and it'll get recycled. It's creating jobs. And that way it's not going into our water supply. We're not having more toxins in our water and, you know, posing no threat to our marine life. 
And when you think, oh, how many beads would you really collect? I was reading, Jeff, you guys, y'all didn't just get a little white, lightweight last year. How many did y'all collect last year in your first year? We, in our first year, we collected more than 10,000 pounds. And now, a lot of that is because we partnered, you know, um, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, which is one of our community partners again this year. They found out we were doing it, and their students got involved, and, you know, they, they brought a lot of beads. They helped us transport them to uh, to New Orleans. And this year, we, you know, the Beau Ravage did the same thing last year. They're helping us again. They're one of our community partners. Mississippi Power's getting on board this year. We've partnered with the the D'Iberville High School uh, Eco Warriors Club. They're going to do the do a bead drive at their school. Um, so many people getting getting involved this year. So we, you know, if you're if you live in coastal Mississippi, you know, we want you to know if you collect them, we're your spot. Bring them to us if you want to get rid of them, and you know, hopefully we can collect even more than we did last year. If they are not necessarily coastal Mississippi, Jeff, is there any way that we can responsibly, I guess, donate our beads or hang on to them until we come and visit? Or you can, you can hang on to them until you come and visit, or you know, just you know, perhaps there there are places, you know, maybe even as far up as Hattiesburg or places in the Pine Belt that 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 you know would would do the same, have the same sort of service, but. Certainly, if you want to hold on to them, bring them. I'll I'll keep them. Keep them. I'll keep them in my office, and uh, and you know because this has become something we're going to do every year. Because um, I again, feel like there's just, so many of us that have like that one big box or case or whatever it, it is that sort of just hangs around your house because you don't want to throw them away, but you don't really know what to do with them, and so you feel like, hey, this would be a great way to repurpose them. Again, you're providing jobs for those you know who are differently abled, and then also just getting it out of your house and not not into the landfill. I think that's great. I feel like there can be someone listening to good things you can collect in your area, and then y'all just take a trip to the Gulf Coast before the 25th and yeah, if, if and deliver them. If you do that, I'll, I'll, be glad to, I'll, I'll be glad to get your ticket for you. If you're going to drive down from Tupelo or Columbus or, you know, Horn Lake with a, with a car full of beads, I'll be glad to help you out. Oh, that's awesome. I think that's a, cha- a challenge someone should accept and, you know, create a great story and then also give back because I think this is just, you know, but this is another part of why supporting all of our aquariums and museums and other sort of things around the state, they give back in such unique ways. You're a part of that whenever you just take the family for spring break or you get ready for something this summer, which I know is right around the corner, and I'm putting you on the spot, but, Jeff, y'all got big stuff coming up in the spring for spring break or anything else? Absolutely. I mean, I just left a meeting on our uh, spring and early summer plans. Uh, We're kicking off Z's uh, by the fee again in March. We're going to do it in March, April. We have You can go online right now and and book it if you want to. It's, It's geared for kids ages 5 to 12. So if you want to give your child like a really cool experience, you can book a night. Um, those dates are available. We have them uh, first starting in March. You get to come spend the night in the aquarium. There's learning. There's fun. So we're super excited uh, to be launching our Z's by the Sea program again. We have our spring camp coming up, which is going to be a day camp. And we have two sessions for that, and that's going to be April 7th and April 14th. So if you have a STEM-minded student uh, between the ages of, I believe, 7 and 14, you know, book them, book them a day camp. They'll come. They're going to learn about sustainable fishing in Mississippi. They're going to get some hands-on experience here at the aquarium. Uh, we've relaunched our behind-the-scenes tour. It's totally revamped now. Now you get to go uh, inside our otter habitat and, and get a look at that. We have a really excited program we're launching, hopefully in March, called Trainer for a Day where you get to work with our marine mammal experts and you get to see them interact with the the otters. And then in the afternoon, you get to help them uh, do the dolphin training session. So Sign me a up. lot of cool things coming up. Sign me up. I think the, uh, the otters are just underappreciated, really cool animals. And I think they're one of the best things there at the aquarium. They have such cute personalities. And I don't know why I just want to squeeze and hug one. They're probably not very friendly, but they look like they could be. <laughs> and so I'm team otter all the way. They are friendly. They are very friendly in the front of their habitat when our guests are coming through. And, you know, people love them. We have two males and two females. We keep the males out at one time and the females out at the other time. And then our uh, 
marine mammal experts are actually working with our otters so that we hope hopefully one day we'll be able to have an otter uh, encounter where you may actually even get to touch one. So that, that's our goal for the future. Well, Jeff, you always are full of great information going on there at the Mississippi Aquarium. Find you guys on Facebook, Instagram to stay in the know or just right here because I know you'll be back when you got more to share. But thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. It's my first time in uh, 2023. So ah, yeah. thank you so much. Happy Mardi Gras, and uh, y'all come see us. All righty, stick with us. we got more for you coming up next.